So now that it's time for you to start on your website, I decided let's just quickly do a recap on some web design principles, just so that you can design a website that's really stunning and has some good design principles. All right, so um, design is not just what it looks and feels like, it's a lot about how it works. So firstly, you need to keep in mind what your purpose is. It's not for entertainment. In our instance, it's pretty much for information. It's not for business. Um, it's to communicate information effectively. And to communicate, we need to make the information as clear and as easy to read and digest as possible. So to do that, we need to organize the information using headlines and subheadlines. That's headings, basically. And rather use bullet points instead of long sentences. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is to actually take your phase three that you've typed up and um, do a bit of editing and cut down on the long paragraphs and rather change it into short bullet points rather than the long sentences. Okay, some tips on typefaces, basically the type of font. You get two types of fonts. I don't know if you remember this from grade 10. Serif and sans serif. Serif have these kind of um, little feet, basically. And they are suitable for using in a printed media. Whereas sans serif is much better for uh, online uses because it's easier to read online and try to stick to about 16 um, in terms of size. We can maybe do a little bit um, smaller than that, but 16 as a maximum and a maximum of three typefaces. So that's three font types and three point sizes. So three different sizes to keep it streamlined just so that it doesn't look too busy. Colors. So it, we need to have a good color palette so that there are complementary colors, so that there's balance and harmony. Contrasting colors will make it easier to read. You can't use a dark background and then dark text on that, then it won't be easy to read. You can't, for example, have a white background and then yellow text on that. That won't be easy to read. So um, vibrant colors uh, should be used sparingly, things like that. You can see that's a vibrant color, but we can't use that too much. It'll be too much on the on the eye. Last but not least, and this is very important, white space or negative space is very effective at giving your website a modern and uncluttered look. Now, if we just look at this website, do you see all of this white space on the sides? That makes it very easy to read. The fact that we have basically this column in the middle to have our text to read. So we can achieve this by using tables and basically just making the table, I would say pretty much 60% um, or even 50% of the size of the whole page um, and having it aligned in the middle. It will really create a lot of white space on the side and make sure that you have the paragraph tags for each paragraph so that there's space between your text as well, so that there aren't these big chunks of text. White space makes a very big impact to make things easier to read and actually have your audience want to read your website to have an uncluttered look. Right, images, you need to also use sparingly. You need to use the right images. Um, now, we're going to definitely use our graphs that we made in phase two. And if you want to use a photo, which can be very effective, especially for the home page or the landing page, then let me just quickly show you here. Let's say, for example, we want a picture of a forest as the background. Then you can't just use any of these. These are pictures with copyright. So go to Tools, Usage Rights and labeled for non-commercial reuse because I mean you're not going to make w money out of this um, website so non-commercial reuse means you're not going to make money out of it but you are allowed to reuse it then these are the kind of images that you are allowed to reuse now at the bottom here when you hover over it this is the pixel uh, value now this is an enormous pixel value 
if you want to use this, you're going to have to resave it in paint or something and actually make it a smaller pixel value because um, this will take, this will make the loading time for your uh, website very, very long. So rather use uh, pictures that have a smaller font or a smaller pixel count that uh, it won't impact the loading time of your website so much if you think of uh, putting this online. And I mean, I know most of you won't be putting this online, but these are just basic principles that you need to keep in mind for if you design websites. Uh, oh, and if you do use any of these uh, pictures, then let's say open this, then you would have to save this image and save it. Let me go show you in your pet folder in phase three website because it has to be in the same website uh, it has to be in the same folder as where your website will be so let's say that will be background okay and then this is very important to actually have the url where you got this website so right click and copy link address when you have this website open okay let's see what this turns out as just going to open a notepad quickly and see what this looks like. Okay, no, I don't want the whole, I don't want it to start with Google because then I don't have the, I don't actually want that. So I'm going to open the website and just go and copy that address, copy. So on my website itself, I'm going to have to say background from semicolon and then give credit to where I actually got this website from just so that I can acknowledge this is where I got the website. Now, um, if you were to actually design websites professionally, you would actually have to go and read up on, uh, see, link for referral required. All right, free for commercial use. You are actually allowed to use this. Oh, here you can actually download it in a higher resolution. Free download and free for commercial use as long as you link back to this website. So you are allowed to do that. That's nice. Okay, let's go back. Uh, navigation. Now, navigation is extremely important. Um, people need to be able to move around your website very easily. So your page hierarchy needs to be logical. There needs to be clickable links. Okay, and users need to be able to find the information very easily. And wherever you are, people need to be able to click back to where they came from. Let's quickly look at this website in terms of navigation. What I quite like about this is I can see all the links at all time, but I know which page I'm on because of the underline in green. So if I go to services, I can see I'm on the services page because the link is underlined in green. So I, for some reason, uh, you guys always take out take away the link about from the page I'm on. So for some reason, while I'm on the home page, you just link me to the other pages and you don't actually keep the link there. So the whole navigation pane stays exactly the same. All the links are there the whole time, but they show me which page I'm on in some way or another. The color is different or there's a line underneath, something like that. I must say that is a really nice element to show me where I'm at. Okay, grid page, grid based layouts, that's basically putting your information in a grid. They show an example of that here quite nicely. Um, they do that for newspapers and things as well. That's basically putting your information in a grid. If you use columns and if you use a table to put, to basically um, design the layout, then that can work quite nicely. Not that one would do that in a professional environment. But for us, with the tech, with basically, basically with the knowledge that we have, that's the only way we can do that. And then an F pattern design, you've learned about that before. Um, that's basically that they've determined that that's how people read. People like to read from the left to right and from top to bottom. That's an F layout. So either from top to bottom or from left to right. That's basically, if you look here, that's the heat map of how people read. So you can either have your navigation pane at the top or you can actually have your navigation pane on the side because that's how people like to read. 
check that the load time isn't too long and that's why I said the images must be um, must be not to be too not, not be too large and check that your site will be mobile friendly uh, what we mean by that is at least that the images will be will adjust based on the size of the screen that the images won't stay a certain size in, in other words say for example 500 pixels or whatever that they will adjust based on the screen size so it'll rather be 80 percent of the screen or 50 percent of the screen so that if you open it up on a smaller screen then it will actually resize let's just have a look if there's anything else here um web safe fonts uh, basically you do get webs you get fonts that are now uh basically google web fonts but i think for our purpose what we're going to do is we use web safe fonts that are fonts that will be installed on any computer so that needs to be the font that will be installed even on the oldest computers on the user's word version and you can see that and you can find the font names here in the font drop down list in word but just because your computer doesn't have it doesn't mean all computers would have it okay so you can't just choose any of these fonts there's a there's a list with a very limited number of fonts that you can choose from that you know will be on anyone else's computer as well okay um, and then here they also say serif fonts are for headlines keep fonts minimal um, and we use the sans um, I just wanted to show you as well the visual hierarchy that's basically how you draw people's attention to certain elements. People tend to skim over a page. They don't read everything on a page. So it's important to use white space, like we've said before, and also to draw people's attention to certain elements. Um, you can do that by using headings and also sometimes to um, actually make headings different colors. Do you see they make that heading um, in white where the text is a, more than a more bit of a gray? or make um, headings or elements in the heading, like an underline or something, a different color, such as yellow or something like that. Okay, um, I'm going to give you a link to a site that gives you some amazing color schemes that you can use, because I know we aren't all very uh, arty that we can think up our own color schemes. So this website gives us amazing color schemes to use. So if you look here there are 50 different ones that you can look at i will save a pdf as well if you don't have internet access whereas if you like this color scheme these are the colors that they used over here so you can use either all five but preferably only about three of these um, and you will use the hashtag together with this whole code that you need to type in anywhere you want to use this as the background or as font or whatever so you can just have a scroll through this um, and have a look now generally one would usually use this for the background and use these for some elements um, I would say unless it's the home page on the home page on a landing page you can maybe use like a full page of background color like this um, or maybe like a background image or something but then check that the image would also go with the rest of the page okay so please have a look through this this is an excellent resource to choose some nice color schemes and not just think of your own personally i always tell my students the only people who are allowed to choose their own colors are the ones who have design or art as a subject that's literally the only people the rest of you you have to use these color schemes please because you don't have an eye for good colors and you may not use a dark background color and light text on it for all your pages you may only do that for your home page for the landing page because your landing page um i would suggest you basically just do like a design with maybe your abstract on or maybe the introduction not a lot of text and not a lot of information on all right so there you have a good overview of where we're going to get going start thinking of what design you're going to do and then you're going to look at the content just now.